you play Fortnite with a controller, you need to learn how to quote unquote abuse or take advantage of aim assist to its fullest potential. Of course, every time I mention aim assist, I have to say this to try to prevent arguments in the comments. No, aim assist is not overpowered. Anybody who tries to tell you it is, they're wrong. Aim assist is an absolutely necessary feature for controller players, and the game would be borderline unplayable without it. However, even though aim assist is a totally balanced mechanic, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to take advantage of it. You look at the absolute best of the best controller Fortnite players when it comes to aim, and taking advantage of aim assist is something they've all pretty much mastered. And the actual mechanics of abusing aim assist are fairly simple to explain, but does require a bit of practice and feel for it. I basically think of it as almost quick scoping in Call of Duty. Normally, when you shoot at someone in a medium or long range situation in Fortnite, you fully aim down sights, shoot at them, and then continue to track and shoot at them while still aiming down sights. But what you do when you want to abuse aim assist is aim down sights and shoot at the exact same time. And each time you want to take another shot, you just repeat that process over and over again. And here's why this ends up working so well. When you aim down sights, aim assist will pretty much attach your crosshair onto the enemy you're aiming at. The problem is, if that enemy moves at all, you'll have to manually readjust your crosshair to track and follow them if you want to hit your shot. And on top of that, Bloom will make it very difficult for you to land multiple shots in a row. But if you can time it to where you're shooting as soon as you get that aim assist help from aiming in, you'll be able to hit the enemy even if they're moving. And I'll show you guys a clip right now that really is a perfect example of what I'm describing. I've showed this clip before on my channel, but it's too perfect to not show again. There's another, another one. Oh my god, there's a random... Oh yeah, there is. Player team Sunblood, yeah. So in that clip, you'll notice I was using a deagle, and this is important because a few months ago, abusing aim assist was legitimately overpowered. So much so that you could basically do it with any weapon in the game in any type of fight. But with the way aim assist is now, you can't really do that anymore. In my opinion, there are three weapons that abusing aim assist most works with. And those are the Deagle, the Heavy AR, and the TAC Shotgun. It kinda works with SMGs as well, but I personally don't really use the technique with them. Now sadly, the TAC Shotgun really isn't all that good right now. But the best way to use it is by aiming down sights and shooting at the same time, and just doing that over and over again. You won't see that too much now because nobody really uses the tag, but if it gets a significant buff, it'll be really deadly when combined with the music game. The Deagle and the Heavy AR, on the other hand, are both mana weapons, which makes them much more practical uses for aim assist abuse. Being able to abuse aim assist is one of the biggest reasons I prefer the Deagle over any possible SMG in the game, and why I have the Heavy AR as pretty much the best AR in the game right now. Because of aim assist, these two weapons are probably the only two weapons in the entire game where mouse users don't have a huge aim advantage over controllers. Another time of using aim assist comes in handy is in super long range engagements with really any fully auto AR in the game. In those super long range fights, Blue makes it practically impossible to hit more than one shot in a row. Therefore, you can use the technique to constantly shoot one super accurate bullet at a time and get in some free long range shifting. So that's pretty much the best explanation I can give of abusing aim assist in Fortnite. It definitely isn't as good as it used to be, but it's still very powerful if done correctly. And I'd really recommend paying attention to the gameplay in this video because it's something you'll see me doing fairly often. The next tip I want to cover is the importance of keeping yourself active and mobile in close range shotgun fights. This isn't necessarily a tip that specifically deals with aiming better, but it's super important because it's a tip that helps you stay alive when your aim fails. And newsflash, no matter how great your aim ever gets, that will still happen multiple times a game in literally every single game you play. So I want to show you guys a short little 10-15 second clip to give you a visual example of exactly what I mean by that. Sadly, it doesn't have any sound because there was music in the background and I don't want you to do 
you guys finished the main, but it's only like a 12 second clip, so try to pay close attention specifically to my movement. So what you guys just watched was a really good example of the importance of staying active with constant movement and super close range fights. And as I just mentioned, my aim in that fight was not good at all. I missed two shotgun shots and a few AR shots on top of that. But what really matters is the fact that I was able to get the kill without taking any damage. Now back a few months ago when I wasn't as good at Fortnite, all of my movement in close range fights was basically just jumping. You guys probably know that I have my jump button down to a paddle on the back of my controller, so I would just jump up and down constantly without my aim really being affected by it at all. But over time, I realized that constantly jumping in shotgun fights can actually be pretty detrimental at times, and also, I can do so much more than just jumping. Fortnite has a feature in their game known as Jump Fatigue, which basically makes it so that your character starts to jump lower and lower the more times in a row you jump. That may not sound like a huge deal, but it makes it very hard for you to aim while jumping when you aren't really sure how high your jump is actually going to go. That's why I now jump a considerable amount less in fights, but incorporate a lot more non-jumping movement as well. In that clip, you guys saw me do about three to four different things in a 10 second span. I jumped twice, I crouched and uncrouched two to three times, I kinda scraped a little bit from right to left, but that definitely wasn't the best example of scraping, I'll admit that. And finally, I did a really good job of navigating cover to protect myself. Those are all techniques that you can keep, be sure you implement in your close range shotgun fight. That is one of the biggest mistakes I see with new players. They stay way too stationary in those types of fights. That means that they get punished so much more for having lackluster aim. Crouching, jumping, and strafing in fights definitely isn't something that comes naturally, so you really need to make it a priority to focus on it and learn. It may feel really awkward at first like it did for me, but it's totally worth it in the long run. And just one last tip regarding jumping in fights, if you don't play claw, have a scuff controller or an Xbox Elite controller, do not jump around in the middle of shotgun fights. That action will require you to take your hand off of the aiming stick, and that will make it almost impossible for you to hit the shot. The next tip in this video is the importance of tracking and specifically aiming for your enemy's head in shotgun fights. This may sound like one of those super simple tips that everybody knows, but trust me, even if you've heard it before, there's a good chance you just subconsciously don't do it in fights. I'll play another 10 second clip real quick that shows a great example of what this looks like. That clip really speaks for itself, especially with the second and third guys I killed. I saw the second guy running towards me through the transparent wooden wall, and the entire time I was lining up and tracking his head. Then the third guy kinda came out of nowhere and I kinda got screwed by the shotgun timer delay, but I stayed calm and as I waited for the delay to go away, I carefully lined up my crosshair with the enemy's head. And that results in a three-man team wipe in about seven seconds with a total of three shots being fired. The value of hitting headshots is as simple as this. Hitting three pellets in the head is the exact same thing as landing six pellets anywhere else on the body. It really is a bad habit of a lot of players to line up safe body shots when they could instead take a little more risk and aim for the head. Like I said, if you end up missing a few extra pellets, you'll probably end up doing more damage in the end. You want this to be something you bring into your gameplay until it literally becomes second nature. It may take a while, but trust me, it is worth it.
Circles. See, I'll mess up some of them, cause you know, whatever. But you stand further away, and this is gonna help with your aim, especially when it starts moving around like that a lot. Even, even jumping, which is, it's really hard. To do. Like, uh... 